Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the videos titled Electronic Configuration of Atoms. We have now written the electronic configuration of the first 10 elements. So let us now move on to the next 10 elements. So our next element on the list is sodium. Sodium has atomic number 11, it has 11 electrons and as we did in the previous video up to neon, neon has is the 10th element, it has the configuration 1s2, 2s2 and 2p6. So sodium now, the next electron of sodium, that is the 11th electron, moves on to the next orbital and here 1s, 2s and 2p have been filled up. Now the turn of the next orbital according to energy, the next orbital is 3s which has energy greater than 3, uh, 2p so the first electron of so that is the uh, last electron of sodium now or the 11th electron goes to 3s so what would the configuration of sodium be now the configuration of sodium would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s1 right this is the configuration of sodium the next element is magnesium and now magnesium the second electron or the 12th electron if you really see the configuration of magnesium now the next electron the 12th electron should go to 3s2 because the 3s orbital has a capacity of two electrons and hence one electron now goes here so that's the 12th electron so what will the configuration of magnesium be it will be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 but now see as we are moving on from sodium magnesium onwards we will find that 1s2, 2s2 and 2p6 are already filled. So in other words the configuration of neon is already there and that's the inner shell and then the next shell that is the second shell was complete, was completely filled. And now we have moved on to the third shell, the principal quantum number 3 and we are filling up the orbitals of the third shell. Now, whatever is the outermost orbital, that is known as the, they are, those electrons are known as the valence electrons. And that shell, the outermost shell is known as the valence shell. While the inner shell, the one that is completely filled, in this case it is 2, the second shell which is completely filled in, from sodium onwards, that is known as the core of an atom. The core is already filled and the electrons always fill up the outermost shell which is known as the valence shell and these electrons which occupy the valence shell are known as the valence electrons. I'll tell you why they are so important. They are important because it is these valence electrons which are responsible for the chemical properties of all elements. It is these valence electrons which participate in chemical bonding. It is these valence electrons which are, which are lost in order to acquire stability to form, uh, to form positively charged ions. And it is these electrons which, this shell which gains electrons in order to make a negative ion and make the atom stable. We will come to that in later chapters. But right now, I want to tell you about the core electrons and the core of an atom and the valence shell. So there is another way of writing down the configuration. If we carry on writing these configurations from 1s to the valence electrons, sometimes the configurations become very lengthy. To avoid that, what is done, the core which is common, which is completely filled, we usually write down the formula of that element, that last element of that shell, and we put it in a box bracket. So I will do it for magnesium and then I'll move in, move back to sodium. But let me first move. What is now the configuration of magnesium? Magnesium would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which means the neon configuration is already completed. And then we have 3s2. So instead of writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, I can instead write neon in a bracket which means it has the core configuration of neon and the valence orbitals now are 3s2 this makes the configuration shorter so for neon let us write down the if you want to write the detailed configuration of course you can write all of them but this is a shortcut so 
Now, after this magnesium, which had 12 electrons, we the two electrons go to the s orbital. Let us now come to the next uh, configuration. The next configuration is aluminum. Aluminum will have one electron moving on. What is the atomic number? 13. So 10 plus 2, one electron goes to 3p. So we have neon, 3s2 and 3p1. Right? For silicon, the next electron, again the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity comes into play. The next electron should move to the other orbital. If this is Px, this is Py, the next electron moves to Py, Py to singly occupy the degenerate orbitals. But we can write it as a common uh, configuration or we can write them separately too, even more detailed, uh, up to the orbital. So this would now be neon, which is the core configuration. 3s2 and 3p2 or you can write 3px1 and 3py1 either way if you want to write it up to the orbitals you can specify the x and y's or you can just write 3p2 it would be understood that if there are only two electrons in the p orbitals they should occupy according to Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity they cannot be present in the same orbital they have to occupy another orbital then comes the configuration of phosphorus. Phosphorus will be neon is the 15th element. So it will be 3s2 and 3p, I'm, uh, I'm making it smaller again. And 3p instead of 2, it will now be 3p3. So in phosphorus, one electron moves to the third p orbital. Right? So after this is the next element, sulfur. Sulfur would be again neon, it is the 16th element. So where would the next electron go? Obviously, it will start pairing in the 3p orbitals. So the 16th electron will now come here. So this is sulfur. So sulfur would be neon, then 3s2 and 3p4. Right? Chlorine. Chlorine will again have neon configuration as the core configuration. And the valence electrons would now be chlorine would have seven electrons in the outermost shell so the next electron goes in here so it would be 3s2 and 3p5 that is chlorine we now come to argon argon is again neon and then we have 3s2 and 3p6 there is one more rule in filling up of electrons it is known as the octet rule. It has been found that the outermost shell or the valence shell of an atom can never have more than eight electrons. The, it can never have more than eight electrons and this is known as the stable octet. And atoms try to acquire this octet. They react in order to complete those eight electrons they do so either by sharing electrons or by losing or gaining electrons. But we will do that in the uh, chapter chemical bonding. But uh, just a little idea that all the outermost shell usually has a maximum of a, or rather almost always has a maximum of eight electrons except for one element in the uh, entire periodic table and that's palladium which has 18 electrons in its outermost shell and it has a reason why. But uh, the octet rule tells us now the third shell, although the third shell has 3d orbitals, do you see? The third shell has 3s, 3p and 3d orbitals. But according to energy, after 3p, it is not 3d that fills up, it is 4s orbitals which have lower energy than 3d. And I told you what is the reason for this? The n plus l value of 3d is 5 n is 3 and the value of l for d orbitals is 2 therefore 3 plus 2 is 5 but the value of 4s the n plus l value for 4s is 4 and s is 0 therefore it will have a value of 4 so although this is the fourth shell as we studied in the Bohr's orbital we thought uh, Bohr's model we thought that as the principal quantum number increases the energy of the orbitals increases but quantum mechanics tells us that it is not just the principal quantum number but the 
azimuthal quantum number 2 which decides the energy of an orbital. Therefore, 4s orbital fills up before 3d orbital. As a result of this, what happens? If only these two are filling up, the p orbitals have 6 electrons and the s orbital has only 2 electrons. Therefore, all the elements which have these many electrons, if that is, if that is behaving as the outermost shell, it can, they can only have a maximum of 8 electrons. And the next element, the two electrons will fill up in the fourth shell. And after filling up of the fourth shell, the 3D is filled up. But then the fourth shell will be treated as the outermost shell. And that is why it will... And then after 4P, see, 5S is being filled up. So even here, if you are filling up, the outermost shell is acting as the fourth shell. You will only have two electrons here and six electrons here. So the octet will be completed. And then the next electron will move on to the fifth shell before filling up the 4D orbitals. We will come to that later. But let us now uh, continue with our configurations. So the next element, that is the 19th element, is potassium. Potassium has 19 electrons, so neon makes it 10, and then we have 3s2, 3p6, and the one electron does not go to 3d, rather it goes to 4s. Do you see? The next orbital to be filled up after 3p is 4s. So we have 3p6 and 4s1. Then calcium would be, again, let me write the detailed configuration for this now. Calcium would be, I'll write the neon configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2. This is the detailed configuration of calcium, which has 20 electrons in it. So do you see, now this 20th electron goes into 4s and completes the orbital 